All right, 1 Kings 2, let's call this one settling accounts with old debt. Understanding that to get there, we may need to understand David's last words to Solomon, which we are going to see in this chapter as he is going to tell Solomon three things to keep as a priority. First, be strong. Second, as we've talked about David in uh, his final words regarding his own rule, it was important for him not to simply talk about being a man of God, but to offer up his family as an example of receipts for his relationship with God. And likewise, he is going to say, you need to be a man, but you need to offer up receipts for your manhood or your standing as a king. It's not enough for you to simply sit on the throne. The people need to know that they can trust you. And finally, it's not enough simply to have the swagger of a king. It's important to make sure that you have the integrity of a king. Therefore, he is going to say, remember the commands of God as given by Moses and keep them all. Neglect none. Understanding there are a lot of people who are going to sit on the throne of Israel. There are not very many of them who are going to sit on it for either very long or who are going to sit on it very well. And God's law is the counsel by which kings and people can have longevity in their periods of prosperity. And so those are the three things that David reminds Solomon of, but he's going to say on the other end, there are some accounts that still need to be settled. Understanding that Joab's blood guilt is still a thing. So not only that, Shimei, even though Shimei is going to prove to be loyal uh, to not only David after repenting the cursing, but he's also going to prove to be one of the few that's loyal to Solomon. It's not going to be enough. But on the upside, there are those who were able to show loyalty to David consistently, and he's saying repay them as well. So he counsels Solomon to give the sons of Brazili a perpetual seat at his table. So understanding that, uh, David is going to pass on and leave the reins to Solomon. But uh, Adonijah is going to continue to press his luck as he is going to not go to Solomon directly to make his request for a wife, but he is going to kind of backdoor Solomon by going to Bathsheba, his mother, and saying, uh, promise me you won't deny me what I'm requesting. He's going to request for a wife, the young woman who kept David warm in his later years. And she is going to say, well, I don't know what the problem is. My paraphrase, of course, but she is going to go to Solomon and she's going to make the request in the same form. Do not deny me whatever it is that I ask you. And he says, I will not deny you. She makes a request and he's infuriated. And so in uh, finding a clever way to get what he wanted, uh, Adonijah is actually going to get something he didn't expect. And that is death before the end of the chapter. And understanding that Adonijah was already skating on thin ice, as we mentioned before, he was not really in a safe position to do anything even remotely construed as shady. And that's exactly what he did. And so since Solomon has already been put in a difficult position with regard to Adonijah, he is going to go ahead and take care of the rest of those who tried to help him take the throne of Israel. He's going to call in Abiathar the priest, and he's going to say, even though you deserve to die, the fact that you not only showed loyalty to my father, but you suffered with him during his struggles is going to save your life, even though he's going to be removed from the priesthood. But the news for Joab is not going to be quite as good this time. Joab is going to be the one to run to the horns of the altar as Solomon sends his replacement, Benaiah, out to go and execute Joab. And so with that, Solomon is going to close out accounts with those who conspired to take the throne of Israel from him. The difference between those who lived and died seeming to be thin ice. See, Abiathar, even though he conspired against Solomon, spent the majority of his time not simply serving righteously, but serving sacrificially, putting his own life at risk to stand with David during the days he was being chased by Saul. Uh, the others, on the other hand, even though Joab was loyal, he abused his privilege as David's general to carry out murders in peacetime. And so he was skating on thin ice at the point he decided to throw his lot in with Adonijah. And likewise, Adonijah, after having his life spared skating on thin ice, he continued to be shady in the way that he tried to obtain a wife that could possibly threaten Solomon again. And likewise, Shimei, even though he tried to maintain loyalty to Solomon, it was too little too late, understanding that the severity of the curse that he put on David was apparently bad enough that he was going to have to live the rest of his life on thin ice that he eventually fell through. So understand why 1 Kings chapter 2 may be yet another cautionary tale on the value of living with integrity, building the kind of credibility that will allow us to make decisions on stable places, as opposed to eroding our credibility with God to the point where we're making decisions on thin ice.